Welcome to the Bellevue City Council meeting. It is Tuesday, September 1st, 2020, 6 p.m. Uh, if you would uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for the invocation from Pastor William Johnson from the Revival Tabernacle Church at 2226 Jefferson Drive. I'd appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Thank you for being here. All better with you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's so much better. I can actually hear myself. Thank you so much. I'll make this as short as I can. Precious Lord, we thank you for all of the city leaders here tonight. I ask special prayer today for divine protection for our police, for our fire department, emergency medical responders, and of course, the military personnel in our area here. And Lord, please give our city council guidance as they endeavor to meet the needs of the community of Bellevue. We know that a lack of guidance causes a nation to fall, but victory is won through many advisors. Lord, let us not be misguided in this meeting so that we do not lead to decisions that that produce ineffective results. I pray that you direct our steps so that this meeting can achieve the best possible results concerning the needs of this great city. We place you at the center of all that we do here today. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, amen. Thank you, Pastor Johnson. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order with roll call. Susan, would you take that, please? Mr. Stinson? Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Mr. Shannon? Here. Mr. Preister? Here. Mr. Burns? Here. And Ms. Welch? Here. Thank you. Thank you. This meeting is conducted in accordance with the Nebraska Open Meetings Act. A copy of that act is located on the rear wall of the council chambers. Item five, approval of agenda, consent agenda, claims, and advisory committee reports. 5A is approval of the agenda. Councilman Pricer. Mayor, I would move to approve the agenda with one exception. I would include moving 11A to just before item 17 on the agenda so that item 11A would be the last uh, agenda item. Does that require a second? Uh, yeah. I think we should do a motion to approve the agenda first and then a second discussion and then amend. I move to approve the agenda. Second. Okay, motion by Preister, seconded by Burns. And then you can make an amendment if you want. And then uh, Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I will move to amend the agenda to move item 11A to the end of the agenda to just prior to item 17, the administration report. Second that. Motion by Preister, second by Stenson to amend the agenda, moving item 11A, right, before item 17? Correct. Councilwoman Welch. I also have a motion to amend. I'd like to pull number 10 per the applicant's request. Do we have a second for that? I'll mm -hmm. second it. So let's take the item 11A, the amendment to move 11A before 17. We have a motion by Preister, uh, seconded by Stenson. Is that correct? Mayor, let's do the motion to amend 10 first since that was the last amendment on the floor. Okay. We will take the uh, 
Motion by Welch and second by Cook to remove item 10 from the agenda. Any questions on that one? Please vote. We'll do it as an amendment. All voted yes. Thank you. Now we'll take the amendment to uh, move item 11A right before item 17. We had a motion by Price or motion by Pryster, second by Stenson. Any questions? Um, just to clarify the amendment, was your amendment to move it before 17 administration reports? Yes. Okay. It would be the last item on the agenda. So before 19 or before 17? Uh, we amended the agenda. I'm not getting my computer pulling it up. So um, item 17 is the administration of yeah, reports. 19 is adjourned. Did you want it before 17 or 19? Which one was your amendment? Well, I need it before 18. So we can do the administration reports and then between 17 and 18. So after 17. Okay, yes. Okay. Between 17 and 18. Okay. So, so it would be a, a new 18. So price was amended, Stenson, you okay to second? I think, uh, I think you're wanting it after the executive session, correct? We have discussion right now on the amendment, so you guys could discuss where are, are you want wanting it, it at, before after we uh, discuss legal matters? Yeah. Yes, I I think you're right. As I think about it, so it would be after 18 before 19. Yes, after 18 and before 19. So, do you want to withdraw your amendment and then make a different amendment? To get it correct. Sorry for the confusion. Want. I will withdraw my amendment if the second is withdrawn. Stenson. Councilman okay. Stenson. Okay. okay. Then I would move to amend to place item 11A after item 18. And I'll second that. Okay. So we have a motion to move item 11A. Uh, to after 18 and before 19. And a second by Stenson. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. All right. Any questions on that? Please vote. Five yes votes and one no vote with Mr. Shannon voting no. Okay, um, amendment passes. So we are back to uh, 5A, which is approval of the agenda as amended. We had a motion by Pryster, second by Burns. Are there any questions on that? Please vote. All voted yes. Well, that was fun. A year and a half, I don't think I've amended the agenda yet. <laughs> Item 5B, approval of the consent agenda. Items marked with an asterisk are approved where the item is unless otherwise removed. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve the consent agenda, and then I would like to make an amendment. All right, probably would just tell you that I want to re remove it, right? You don't have to make an amendment to remove okay. something off the consent agenda. So you just make a motion to approve the consent agenda. And I would like to remove under claims, the claim under legal Erickson and Cedarstrom for professional fees. Okay, let me back up. <laughs> you would just need a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, I'll make that motion. I'll second. We have motion by Cook, second by Pryster. Now we have 
discussion. And then you can just ask to remove the claims in its entirety off of, if that's what you want to do. You don't have to have a motion for it. I just want to remove the legal Erickson Cedarstrom professional services. It'd be cleaner to just remove the whole claims. Okay, I'll remove the whole claims. Okay. Okay, we have a motion by, is there, are there any other items? Any council members would like removed? There's only one left. <laughs> item, uh, let's see, <laughs> item 5B was a motion by Cook, seconded by Preister to approve the consent agenda with the claims removed. So please vote. All voting yes. All right, thank you. Moves us to item number seven, special <laughs> removal of the claims. Thank you. Item number six. Okay, Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just would ask that our city administrator, Jim Risto, explain the professional One services. Board. Can we have a motion so we can have a discussion? Yes. I'll make a motion. We approve the claims. Second. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, may okay, motion by Cook, second by Preister. I'd just like to have our city administrator. Mr. Risto will explain the professional services on our claims today. So the, so Erickson Sutron, the they believe it's an $8,800 cost. Our um, legal department, Bree specifically, has been named as a, um, what's the right language I want to use? Defendant. Defendant in a legal matter. Uh, City Councilman Pat Shannon has um, named Bree as the defendant in a lawsuit against the city. So Bree has to conflict out and not represent the city. So we contracted outside legal, which would be Erickson and Seedstrom to represent the city through that matter. That's the $8,800. Thank you. Any other questions on claims? We have a motion by Cook. Seconded by Preister to approve the claims. Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Now we can go to seven. Special presentations. 7A is proclamation declaring September as National Library Card Sign-Up Month. And we'll come up to the podium and read it. <laughs> right eye is not working, so bear with me. Uh, proclamation Library Card Sign-Up Month 2020, whereas a library card is the most essential school supply of all, whereas libraries and librarians play a crucial role in the education and development of children, whereas libraries offer a variety of programs to stimulate an interest in reading and learning, whereas library resources serve students of all ages from early literacy to uh, STEAM programs, -E programs to research databases, Whereas signing up for a library card is the first step of the path towards academic achievement and lifelong learning. Whereas a library card gives students the tools that foster success in the classroom and beyond. Whereas librarians create welcoming and inclusive spaces for students and all back, of all backgrounds to learn together and engage with one another. Whereas a library card empowers all people to pursue their dreams and explore new passions and interests. Whereas libraries are constantly transforming and expanding services to meet the evolving needs of their communities. Therefore, it is resolved that I, Mayor Rusty Hike, proclaim September Library Card Sign Up Month in the city of Bellevue and encourage everyone to sign up for their own library card today. So,
Okay, I would like to, is Tom Dargy here? Captain Dargy? I'll say Chief, officially I can still say Chief Dar Dargy if you'd come forward, please. And I just want to, Jim and I would like to thank you. Come on up, Jim. Actually, that writing, um, you want to read that? Here we go. We got a cheat sheet. This is better. All right. So the inscription just says, "Thank you for your dedicated service to the city of Bellevue and your leadership of the Bellevue Police Department during a time of transition. Your contributions are greatly appreciated." Thank you. And it's been a tough uh, stint there. Yep. Thank you. So Tom got us through the uh, COVID, uh, stepped in and took us right through COVID and some protest and uh, did a great job and appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I just want to say really quick, um, I appreciate um, the backing of the administration and the council and everything. Uh, but um, while I did get this, I also have a, a great command staff um, that, that helped me through all this. And then um, last but not least, all the officers um, that every day um, do great things. Thank you. I just, I'm going to add this that um, while Tom got us through uh, harrowing time too, is that Tom also um, top flight captain uh, could potentially be our chief sacrificed applying for that position to see us through this and sat on the sidelines. But Tom and Tom, as well as your staff, uh, your, your command staff have a great deal of respect for you and your staff, and I appreciate everything you've done and your sacrifice to see us through this time and sit in the sidelines too. So again, I want people to know that, that it's a big sacrifice for you too. So thanks, Tom. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank So next uh, step, we are going to swear in our new uh, uh, police chief, uh, Ken Clary. His wife, Jody, is in the audience. And uh, Jim's done most of the talking with him, so I just want to let Jim say a few words, and then I'll, I'll do the swearing in. So first of all, Ken, I just want to make sure that we get this right when I'm driving through Iowa in the future, that you'll see, make sure I won't get tickets going to uh, <laughs> But I didn't find out he's a Vikings fan, but I'm sure there's no help there. But... Um, it was, uh, it's been an eight month journey for us to get to this. Um, we went through 20, 20 candidates, quite a process to get to the finalists. Uh, Ken was one of the finalists in the three and the cream truly rises to the top. Um, we're absolutely thrilled that Ken's joining our team here, um, his leadership style, his management skills, um, and the ability to lead this team as we're excited to see what happens here. And uh, we're looking forward to. Uh, a good future with Ken here. So I uh, won't belabor that much, but um, we're glad to have you part of our team. So that's the other half of the team. Yes. <laughs> My wife, Jody. your right hand. I, Ken Clary, do solemnly swear. I, Ken Clary, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Nebraska. That I will uphold the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Nebraska. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. And without mental reservation or for purpose of evasion. Or without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. 
and that, and that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties of the position of police chief. And that I will faithfully and impartially fulfill the duties of the position of police chief. According to law and to the best of my ability. According to law and to the best of my ability. And I do further swear that I do not advocate. And that I do further swear that I do not advocate. Nor am I a member of any political party. Nor am I a member of any political party. Or organization that advocates. Or organization that advocates. The overthrow of the government of the United States. The overthrow of the government of the United States. Or the st or of this state by force or violence. Or of this state by force or violence. And that during such time. And during such time. As I am in the position, I will not advocate. That I am in the position, I will not advocate. Nor become a member of any political party. Will not advocate or become a member of any political party. Or organization that advocates. Or organization that advocates. The overthrow of the government of the United States. The overthrow of the government of the United States. Or of this state by force or violence. Or of this state by force or violence. So help me God. So help me God. New badge. Very nice. Chief, Belby, Nebraska. Absolutely. <laughs> Much better than Will. Forget the boss. <laughs> you need a second badge. And I've had that badge for two hours this afternoon, so you may or may not be getting calls. <laughs> Would you like to say something? Just a couple words, if I might. You can sit if you'd like. I know she. I know that was her least favorite thing to do. She, <laughs> so not standing by my side, but standing in front of a crowd. So first of all, um, I want to thank Tom, uh, if he's still here, um, for leading the way. Um, over the last eight months, uh, filling that gap, obviously not an easy thing to do uh, during the transition and uh, times that we have not seen in law enforcement, uh, arguably ever. Uh, I also want to thank the mayor, Mayor Hike, and City Administrator Risto, the City Council, uh, for this opportunity and the faith uh, you have uh, shown in me to do the job. Uh, honored to be chosen to serve the great men and women of the department as well as the, the amazing and vibrant community of Bellevue. Um, actually, looking back at 26 years of law enforcement service, uh, there are countless leaders, coaches, mentors, teams that have lifted me up. Uh, they truly deserve uh, the credit for the successes that I've achieved. But uh, there are too many to name tonight, I will say. Uh, but what, without the support of my wife, my family, and those people, I wouldn't be standing here today. So it's truly their credit that, that I'm here. Um, I do look forward to working to provide the support, the training, the equipment, that, and did I mention support? <laughs> <laughs> that these men and women who de dedicated their lives to service deserve. Uh, it's truly about supporting them so that they can provide the best service that they can to the community of Bellevue. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, it's uh, it's exciting to have you here. Uh, just the interview that I had with you, um, I think you're going to fit great into the team, and I, I think you're a great addition to the city of Bellevue. So we'll look forward to the next uh, how many years? As Welcome. Many as <laughs> Welcome, Jody. Thank you. All right, nine approved citizen communications. We have none. Ten is removed and eleven has been moved. So we're at eleven B. Ordinance number four zero zero five, adoption of budget statement to be 
termed the annual appropriations bill. Susan, would you read that ordinance? Ordinance number 4005, an ordinance to adopt the budget statement to be termed the annual appropriations bill to appropriate sums for necessary expenses and liabilities and to provide for an effective date. Thank you. Item 11B1, resolution number 2020-35, a resolution to set the 2020-2021 property tax request. And I will open that up for a public hearing. Rich, if there's anything you wanna say regarding that, then, okay. Public hearing is open, opened up for resolution number 2020-35. Is there anybody here willing, wanting to speak on the property tax request? Seeing nobody, I'll close the public hearing and uh, take a motion. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. Do I move on the ordinance and the resolution? Just the resolution at this time. So I will move to approve resolution number 2020-35. I'll second that. Motion by Preister, seconded by Welch. Any questions? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Item 11B2, approve an additional 1% in the base of restricted funds. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion. We approve 11B2. Second. Motion by Cook, seconded by Preister. Any questions or comments? Please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 11B3, approve ordinance number 4005, which is the 2020-2021 fiscal year budget. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I will move to approve item 11B3, the 2021 fiscal year budget. I'll second that. Motion by Preister, second by Welch. Any questions or comments? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. Just a brief comment, and that is, this is one of the essential services, one of the essential things councils do, pass a budget, set the, the amount of taxes for people. And I, I wanna just highlight the item that we had in our packet. It's a pie chart that lists where that tax money goes. And the first one, on an average home in Bellevue, one that fits my, my home, a pro, just under $150,000 valuation, $259 of that, or 30%, goes to pay for our police department. I think that's a, a big bargain. I don't know where you can go. You probably can't even get a service from a private organization or even one of the uh, systems that you set up on your house for $259 a year where you have police on call 24 hours a day round the clock. That seems a pretty good value. Fire, our fire department now fully professionalized in this budget costs us $129 per each household in Bellevue on average for that valuation of a house, 15% of our budget. For parks and recreation, 5% of the budget or $38, you have access to all the parks in Bellevue for an entire year with no additional cost. Then planning permits and code is 2% of the budget in that pie chart or $14 for those services and all of the administration and other services, $147 or 17% of the budget. And as I think of what you could get for those amounts, those amounts when we pay them in property tax seem a lot. 
but I think they are, when you break them down into those departments, about the amount that some, some of us pay for coffee. So I think we're getting a pretty good value even though we don't like to pay taxes. And I just wanted to point out that pie chart and the percentages. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for that perspective. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to thank Rich Severson, our finance director, and Marcy Horton in the finance department for all the work that they did in bringing this budget forward. We had meetings, uh, Council President Preister, Councilman Burns, and I met with uh, Mr. Risto and Mayor Hike uh, in regards to the budget and what we brought forward here. I think it's a great budget. Uh, we did a lot of annexations, and that annexations are really allowing the city to move forward. It, it was the right thing to do. So, But I want to acknowledge Rich for his hard work and his staff for putting everything together and bringing it forward. Thank you. I will second that. Any more comments? Okay, we have a motion by Preister, seconded by Welch to approve the 2020-2021 fiscal year budget. Please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 12, ordinances for public hearing. Second reading, we have none this evening. Item 13, ordinances for introduction. First reading, 13A, ordinance number 4006 to allow for statutory changes and revisions to be incorporated into several sections of the city code which have been affected by or generated by legislative changes and to add or change legislative citations. Susan, would you read that ordinance, please? Ordinance number 4006, an ordinance to amend or revise certain ordinances which has been affected by or generated by legislative changes and to add or change legislative citations. Thank you. That was the first reading. The second reading and public hearing will be September 15th, 2020. Item 14, public hearing on matters other than ordinances. There are none this evening. Item 15, 15A, num resolution number 2020-36, master fee schedule. Um, Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I will move that we lay this item over until our next meeting on September 15th. Second. So we have a motion by Preister, seconded by Cook to uh, table this resolution 2020-36 until our next regular scheduled meeting. Any questions or comments? Please vote. All voted yes. Thank you, item 15B, resolution number 2020-38. Authorizing the mayor to sign the annual year-end certification of city street superintendent form for 2020, verifying Robert Joseph Riggs as the city street superintendent from January 1, 2020 to December 31, 2020. Councilman Cook. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion that we approve 15B. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch. Any questions or comments? I just have a question. How come that skipped from resolution 36 to 38? Is that right? Okay. Yeah. There are different or, uh, resolutions out there, so they're okay. just not in order here. Okay, just so you say it's right, that's good. Uh, motion by Cook, second by Welch. Uh, please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Item 16, current business. 16A, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the addendum to the original contract with DIY Holding Company, LLC, increasing the original contract for 2020 concrete projects by $175,000. Councilman Stenson. Make a motion we approve 16A. 
Motion by Stenson, seconded by Preister to approve 16A. Any questions or comments? Councilman Shannon? Yeah. Jim, did you get some answers for me on this? Yeah, let me have these weapons. Turn your mic on. Oh, there you go. It's got a short in it, I think. And Dean, just so you understand what I was asking, uh, the write-up for us to look at to evaluate this item right. uh, was very confusing. It says because of a playground in Two Springs and ADA requirements, we're having to spend 175000 more on Harlan Drive, and the two just didn't seem related. And the work on Harlan, as I understand it, was completed over the last two weeks, but yet we're coming here today to ask for approval. So I just asked for clarification. What are we doing and how are these items related? Uh, some of the confusion behind that is due to uh, public works working remotely. Um, as far as Harlan Drive goes, yes, it became necessary to do a lot of the repairs there. Street Department kind of found out late that they weren't going to be able to address things. So we added it on knowing that we were, that we were under budget on our resurfacing project by over $245,000. So, so we as, knew we as far as the order of getting it done, and I understand your concern with that, it, it was just a bunch of moving parts at the same time when we weren't able to coordinate uh, the way we would normally do in normal times. Okay. And what does the playground have to do with all that? Uh, the playground... Um, it was getting put in, and then we got a report that uh, ADA upgrades needed to occur. Um, that included curb ramps around the perimeter of the of the playground that we had to address. So, typically for a single ADA ramp, you're looking at maybe about nine hundred to a thousand dollars a piece. So. It, it was significant enough where I felt that I it should be added to the cover sheet as well. Harlan Drive took the vast majority of that. Okay. But in the future, you feel like we can yes. rest assured that projects will come to the council before they're completed? Yes. It, Thank, it was thank just you. the situation. That's what I was looking for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Comments? Uh, we have a motion by Stenson, seconded by Preister. Please vote. All voted yes. Thank you. Item 16B, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement with AVI to provide professional engineering services for the Emergency Operations Center in an amount not to exceed $17,867.52. Councilwoman Welch. I'll make a motion to approve 16B. Second. Motion by Welch, seconded by Preister. Any questions? Councilman Shannon. Okay. In the pictures of what we were shown in here, we're shown where our EOC room is going to grow up. It's going to get new furniture. It's getting a new layout. It's getting all kinds of new things. This appears to be one piece of the puzzle here. What is the total cost of what we're doing? So um, they are kind of all in pieces and a lot of it will fall under FEMA uh, funding for COVID related items that we will get reimbursement for on the back end through the CARES Act. Um, our main focus right now is the technology in that room because that was our biggest issue during the protests um, that were happening and um, the COVID-19 <laughs> situation. So our main goal right now if we could get anything accomplished would be the technology, uh, which is this AVI part. The furniture and stuff we're hoping to bring before you, um, it's a joint effort between legal because we're monitoring the CARES Act and FEMA part of it, and the community development director and other people involved in the EOC process. Um, so we're hoping that some of the other pieces start falling in place like the furniture, those sorts of things to make it more user friendly. But our main goal right now is the technology and that's why we brought that to your attention first. So we're gonna get the AVI drops where there's no furniture right now? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. This is really just kind of that, that first step in the technological thing, get them in, do some of that engineering, 
um, and some of the, the screen tech um, that realistically we could use right now if nothing else changed. Do we not have a place we can get this money and just get the whole thing accomplished? And... Rich? I don't know if Rich was probably prepared for that question. Um, I don't think we went and looked in the budget at all. Jim, do you have anything to add? You were in those meetings. No, we're tying this back to the CARES Act, so it's, mm -hmm. uh, and I think go back to your other question about are we dropping in the AVI without the furniture in place? That won't impact what we do with the furniture. So a lot of this AVI is gonna be on the wall, so it's not gonna affect where you're on the, on the flooring and like in the setup of the room, but the money truly ties back to the CARE Act and the money that comes through that. So that's where we're looking to get our funding from. Okay, so not FEMA then? <laughs> Not FEMA, CARES, right? You run all that through the FEMA portal, sorry. Okay. Um, I'm stuck on the FEMA portal on other matters. Okay. Um, so yes, you run all that through the same portal though. Okay. Yes. All right, I understand, thank you. Okay. Total cost, I believe, was, am I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, between 150 and 200 by the time we're done, something like that. That's probably the max on that, that'd be correct. Okay. We should be able to find that pretty easy. Covered by the CARES Act? Correct. So any more questions on that? By Christer, please vote. Three. Does that mean you can spend it before December 31st? All voted yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Item 16C, approve and authorize the mayor to sign a lease agreement for the leasing of certain properties at Hayworth Park. Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I will move to approve item 16C. Second. And I will move to amend it. And motion by Preister, second by Cook. And then we got a motion by Shannon to amend. As passed out tonight, all the changes are in the new copy of the lease that you received when you got here tonight. Let's get a second on the amendment, too. I'll second that. So a motion by Shannon, second by Welch. So any questions on the amendment? seen tonight okay a uh, motion by Shannon seconded by Welch to amend as uh, as the written copy states any questions please vote all voted yes thank you and we have a motion by Preister seconded by Cook to approve the lease as amended any questions? Please vote. All voting yes. Thank you. Item 17, administration reports. Uh, do we have any questions on those reports? Councilman Preister. Thank you, Mayor. I, on the administration report, it lists insurance under the administration. And I just want to comment that the city employees' health insurance claims have flattened out. And I think a, a large amount of credit for that is to our employee wellness program. We've invested in it. Our city employees are operating with it. And I w just want to congratulate the city employees for helping to flatten that cost for the city especially after we just passed our budget. So the encouragement that I would like to send out to our employees is for each one to teach one. And I would encourage each of our employees who is doing the additional work in the employee assistance program to partner up with their fellow employees and to show them what benefits they're getting and encourage them to do the same thing. So if we double next year, we can cut our claims, and it's not just about the budget, it's about the wellness of our employees. So I, th I want to salute our wellness program, but also all of our employees who've done an excellent job in taking advantage of it and then cutting costs in our insurance premium. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, any more comments? I would just add, if you haven't read those reports, um, you know, reading through them, the city of Bellevue is doing a fabulous job. Every department, um, 
they're just good reports and it's it feels good to read those reports all the way from you know the administration things going on our community development uh, we've got projects happening our uh, public works are they're getting a lot of work done this year um, and obviously the finance uh, got us in really good shape like Don mentioned earlier we're we're, we're well funded and got a little bit of extra that we can put in reserves so um, it's all looking good and it doesn't happen without all of our city employees so um, just uh, again thank you for that mr. mayor yep I would offer a motion to adjourn sign dine so that we could hold our reception for the police chief at this time be here a while on the next two issues so out of respect for the audience I guess motion fails fine so 18 uh, is closed session mr. mayor yep I move that the City Council go into a closed session this time for the protection of the public interest. The subject matter to be discussed in closed session is litigation updates. The following individuals will be included in the litigation updates during the closed session. Mayor Rusty Hike, Jim Risto, Bob Stinsons, Paul Cook, Don Preister, Thomas Burns, Kathy Welch, <laughs> Bree Robbins, Heller Vayek, Tani King, Susan Cluthy, Mark Elbert, Tammy Palm, and Daryl Kuhlman. And I need a second. I'll second it. So we have a motion by Welch, seconded by Cook. Is there any discussion? Yes, Mayor, at this time, I'll have Heather Viatt come speak briefly prior to the vote as she is representing the city in these litigation matters that are subject to closed session. Council members, the topics to be discussed in closed session will be litigation updates involving pending litigation matters the council member Pat Shannon has against the city. Um, because I need to discuss these items confidentially with my clients, it would be unethical to discuss these matters in front of Councilman Shannon. Um, and I need to advise my clients separately. Therefore, he's been uh, excluded from the closed session. Thank you. Okay. So any other comments, questions? Motion by Welch, seconded by Cook to go into closed session. Please vote. We have five yes votes and one abstention. Abstention was by Mr. Shannon. Okay, thank you. Is it, is, right? it is now 648. Uh, we will go into closed session. Closed session will take place in the EOC room upstairs. So all those members announced, please head there. Stenson to come out of closed session. So do we have any discussion on that? And actually, the, I'm gonna state the time. It's 708 that we are out. Any discussion on that? Please vote. Five yes votes and one abstention with Mr. Shannon abstaining. Okay, and it's still 708, so we're back in open session now. And we are at 11A. Ordinance for adoption, third reading, 11A, ordinance number 4004, request to rezone lots one through three, block 55, city of Bellevue from BGM-OTO to RG-50-OTO. Applicant city of Bellevue location is 2221 Main Street. Susan, would you read that ordinance? Ordinance number 4004. An ordinance to amend the official zoning map of the city of Bellevue, Nebraska, as provided for by Article 3 of Ordinance Number 3619, 
by changing the zone classification of land located at or about 2221 Main Street, more particularly described in Section 1 of the ordinance and to provide an effective date. Okay, and thank you. And do we have anybody that wants to recuse themselves? Uh, we'll we'll get a motion first. No. Okay, Mr. Shannon, Councilman Shannon. At this point, Mayor, I am going to invoke City Code two seventy one. I would like the minutes to reflect that I am opposed to this action for the following reasons. Each of you have been advised that you have a conflict and should recuse yourselves. I am reminding you of that. But I object to the action of the City Council tonight because Chapter 31, Appendix A, Article 10, Section 10.02 of the Bellevue City Ordinance governs appeals before the Board of Adjustments. And when the Board of Adjustments is pending, it stays all further actions on the item. The city has violated this stay three times and the action that is contemplated tonight is fruit of the poisonous tree because the planning commission meeting action was improper, the first reading was improper, the second reading was improper, and the vote tonight will be improper. So for these reasons, I object and protest the actions of the city council here tonight the city attorney can advise you what the city wants you to do, but each of you is individually responsible for your actions from here on. I recuse myself as the property owner and because I will not participate in the illegal vote you're being asked to make tonight. Thank you. Okay, objection noted. So we can go ahead and take a motion. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion. We approve ordinance number 4004. Second. Motion by Cook, seconded by Pricer. We approve ordinance 4004. Any discussion? Councilman Pricer? Mayor, just a, a response. Uh, Councilman Shannon made a statement and his statement was not a statement of fact, but a statement of his opinion. And that opinion will finally be decided in court. I don't happen to hold that opinion, but it is just his opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Questions? Okay. All right, if there's no other comments or questions, please vote. Motion by Cook, second by Pricer. We have five yes votes and Mr. Shannon being absent. All right, thank you. Councilman Cook. I'll make a motion we adjourn. I'll second that. Motion by Cook, second by Welch to adjourn. Please vote. and make sure the minutes reflect that I returned. All voting yes. 
All right, thank you. Looks like there's a party right now. Please, if you are a council member, do not talk about city business this evening from here on out. Thank you.